welcome to economics revision class for grade 12 provided by the ministry of education this is the third revision lesson of unit one which is about resource allocation so we are going to see the resources and some basic concepts of economics more specifically the production possibility frontier or curve Let's start with the resources. Resources are categorized into two called free resources and scarce or economic resources. These free resources are resources that we are not expected to pay or simply that we get without any cost are called free resources. For example, sunshine is a free resource. We are not expected to pay to get the service of sunshine and oxygen is also free resource but this is not our concern our major concern is the scarce or economic resources scarce or economic resources are those resources that we cannot get at zero cost or everybody is expected to make payments to get these resources called scarce resources and these scarce resources are broadly categorized into four called land labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. As a student of economics, you have to be familiar with the four economic resources called land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Now let's see these scarce resources or economic resources in detail. First, land. When we say land in economics, the land that constitutes the land that constitutes that we use for sites of buildings, the land that we see, the land that we use for a site of building is considered as land. The land that farmers use for farm production is considered as land. And in economics, when we say land, it constitutes all the free gifts of nature, all the natural resources such as gold, crude oil, tantalum, magnesium, diamond, all these are considered as land in economics, including water. Labor, when we say labor in economics, labor constitutes both the physical and mental efforts of human beings. When we say the physical effort, a person who dig a tunnel is exerting his physical effort and it is categorized under labor. Mental efforts of human beings is also categorized under labor. For example, the service that is provided by the service that is provided by teachers, lecturers, and the medical diagnosis that is provided by medical doctors is considered as labor, labor in economics. The reward for the economic resource labor is called wage or salary wage or salary and the reward for the economic resource land is rent land is rent and when we see the third economic resource which is capital capital when we say capital in economics we are not referring the financial capital one rather the machineries buildings equipment that are used for the production of final goods and services are considered as capital in economics. And the reward for the economic resource capital is interest. interest. And finally, finally, the fourth economic resource is entrepreneurship. This is a special talent of human mind to create something new. This is the resource what makes countries either rich or poor. The Americans are rich because they do have a lot of entrepreneurs, but we are poor because we do have small number of entrepreneurs. So this is very important, very important resource for the development of every country. This entrepreneurship is a resource that combines the three economic resources called land, labor, and capital labor and capital together to make a profit or to make business simply and entrepreneurs are the one who undertake the risk involved in production to make profit in production to make profit now let's see the basic concepts of economics 
under the basic concepts of economics there is scarcity scarcity is the imbalance between human needs and wants and this is caused by the limited resources the limited number of resources if there is a scarcity there is choice that means if there is limited resource then it leads to choice and if there is choice if we are obliged to make choice we are going to incur cost this cost is called opportunity cost opportunity cost is the amount of the next best alternative that is given up or foregone while we produce a commodity and finally scarcity implies choice and choice implies cost choice implies cost under this basic concept of economics there is a law called the law of increasing opportunity cost the law of increasing opportunity cost tell us that the opportunity cost of a commodity will always increase that means the amount of the next best alternative that is given up while we choose or produce a commodity will always increase simply it tells us it tells us the opportunity cost of a commodity will always increase now let's see another important or basic concept of economics called the production possibility frontier or curve the production possibility frontier or curve is a curve that shows the various combinations of two commodities that a country can produce by employing the available resources for the production of the two commodities there are assumptions assumptions to plot the ppc the first assumption is full employment when we say full employment as an assumption of plotting the production possibility curve or frontier we are not referring the employment and unemployment rate rather when we say full employment there is efficient utilization of economic resources that means there is no idle resource the other precondition that must be fulfilled to plot the production possibility curve or frontier is fixed resource that means the country is employing a fixed amount of resources in both quality and quantity in both quality and quantity the other assumption is fixed technology the country is producing the two commodities by employing only the available resources and finally we employed only two commodities as an assumption the country can produce only two commodities this is for the sake of simplicity in order to make illustration easily we will take only two commodities now let's see the production possibility frontier here if suppose ethiopia produces teff and tractor now at combination a if ethiopia employs all the available resources for the production of teff only she will not produce any amount of teff hence she can produce 60 60 quintal of teff without producing any amount of tractor and when ethiopia wants to produce one more tractor she has to reduce production of teff from 60 quintal to 50 quintal because the resources which were used for the production of teff are diverted for the production of tractor and when we come across from combination b to combination c as ethiopia wants to increase production of tractor from one unit to two then the amount of tev produced must be reduced to 30 quintal because the resources which were used for the production of tev are used for the production of tractor and when we come across from combination c to combination d then as Ethiopia wants to add one more tractor she has to reduce production of TEV from 30 quintal to zero at combination D Ethiopia employs all the available resources for the production of tractor without producing any amount of TEV now the graphical presentation of the production possibility frontier is called the production possibility curve and it shows the production possibility curve shows the various combinations of two commodities that a country can produce by employing all the available resources for the production of the two commodities only so at combination a the country employs all the available resources for the production of teff only without producing any amount of tractor at combination b the country produces 50 quintal of teff and one tractor 
and that combination say the country produces two tractor with 30 quintal of tev and at combination d the country will not produce any amount of tev but the country can produce three tractors now from this production possibility frontier or curve any point inside the ppc represents attainable but inefficient combination that means the country can produce but there are idle resources the country is not employing all the available resources efficiently so any combination inside the production possibility curve or frontier represents attainable but inefficient combinations of the two commodities any point outside the production possibility curve represents unattainable combination that means the country cannot produce any combination because there is no resource that is used for the production of the commodities outside the production possibility curve or frontier so this is the unattainable combination the country cannot produce any combination outside the production possibility curve or frontier any point on the production possibility or curve any point on the production possibility frontier or curve represents the attainable and efficient condition that means the country can produce at the same time the country is efficient the country is employing all the available resources fully fully to produce the two commodities now let's see the mathematical presentation of the opportunity cost the opportunity cost of a commodity is calculated by dividing the amount of a commodity that is given up for the amount of a commodity that is gained in our model we represented the amount of a commodity that is given up in the y axis and that is gained in the x axis so we represented the amount of theft that is given up in the y axis and the amount of tractor that is gained in the x so this is calculated by dividing change in theft for the change in tractor that means theft final minus theft initial divided by tractor final minus tractor initial so as ethiopia increases production of tractor from 0 to 1 if the production of theft declined from 60 quintal to 50 quintal then let's take this zero as tractor initial and this one as tractor final let's take this 60 as tef final and tef initial and this 50 as tef final so when we substitute this information on this formula the value of tef final is 50 quintal minus tef initial is 60 quintal divided by tractor final is one minus tractor initial is zero and this will give us minus 10 and when we put it out of absolute value we left with 10 so this 10 indicates that as Ethiopia increases production of tractor from 0 to 1 if the production of theft declined from 60 quintal to 50 quintal then the opportunity cost of producing one tractor is losing 10 quintals of theft again when we come across from combination B to combination C as it appears increases production of tractor from 1 to 2 the, the amount of tape production declined from 50 quintal to 30 quintal now let's take this one as tractor initial and this two as tractor final and let's take this 50 as tape initial and this 30 as tape final and when we substitute this information on this formula the value of tape final is 30 quintal and tape initial is 50 quintal divided by tractor final is 2 minus tractor initial is 1 so we left with minus 20 when we put it out of absolute value it is 20. this indicates that as it increase production of tractor from one unit to two units if the production of tape declined from 50 quintal to 30 then the opportunity cost of producing one tractor is 20 quintal that means as it went to add one more tractor losing 20 quintals of tape when we come across from combination c to d then as it wants to produce one more tractor as tractor increases from 
2023, the production of TEF declined from 30 quintal to zero. Hence, let's take these two as tractor initial and three as tractor final. And let's take this 30 as TEF initial and this zero as TEF final. And when we substitute this information on the formula, as we come across from combination C to combination D, then the change in TEF is 0 minus 30 divided by the change in tractor is 3 minus 2. And this is minus 30 divided by 1. When we put it out of absolute value, we left with 30. So as it increased production of tractor from 2 unit to 3, if production of TEF declined from 30 to 0, then the opportunity cost of producing one tractor is losing 30 quintal of TEF. From this information, we can show the law of increasing opportunity cost, which states that as we produce more and more of a commodity, the amount of the next best alternative that is given up will always increase. Simply, the law of increasing opportunity cost states that the opportunity cost of a commodity will always increase. For example, from this model, the opportunity cost of producing one tractor when we come across from combination A to B is 10 quintal of TEF. When we come across from combination B to C, the opportunity cost of producing one tractor is 20 quintal. When we come across from combination C to D, the opportunity cost of producing one tractor is 30 quintal. That means the opportunity cost of a commodity will always increase. This mathematical representation also reveals the law of increasing opportunity cost of a commodity. Now let's see the properties of the production possibility curve or frontier. The production possibility frontier or curve is concave to the origin. As we see from the origin, the production possibility frontier or curve is concave to the origin. The PPC is concave to the origin due to the law of increasing opportunity cost. That means as we produce more and more of a commodity, the opportunity cost of a commodity will always increase. Due to this law, due to the law of increasing opportunity cost, then the production possibility curve is concave to the origin. Another property of the production possibility curve is negatively sloped or the production possibility curve is downward sloping curve. This is due to the inverse relationship between the two variables that are entered in the x and y axis. That means as we increase production of one of the commodity, we are reducing production of the other. And as we reduce production of one of the commodity, we are increasing production of the other. Hence, there is an inverse relationship between the two commodities that are entered in the x and y axis. Hence, the production possibility curve is downward sloping or negatively sloped curve. Negatively sloped curve. If there is technological advancement, the production possibility curve will shift outward. And if there is backward technology, the production possibility curve will shift inward. Another important information, the opportunity cost of a commodity is the slope of the production possibility curve or frontier. Since the opportunity cost is calculated by dividing change in the amount of a commodity that is given up for the amount of a commodity that is gained and we represented all the values of the given up on the y axis. So changing given up means change in y divided by changing the amount of gain which is changing x. Hence this is the vertical difference for the horizontal difference. Then we can conclude that the opportunity cost of a commodity is the slope of the production possibility curve or frontier. This is all about the third lesson of unit one. Stay safe, stay home. Thank you.